What's up, Navigation Traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, January 31st. We're going to review all of our trade alerts, all of our positions exclusively for pro members. Before we do, let's check out the community and talk about who got caught being hot. This week goes to our friend Tim Weiss. Uh, Tim's a pretty experienced trader. I've had a, had the pleasure of, of uh, conversating with Tim about his experience and uh, as I mentioned here in the post, kind of surprising we had never recognized him for his contributions to the community, but uh, finally got you in here, Tim. So thanks for all of your engagement, all of your comments and suggestions and trade ideas and answering other questions. Uh, congrats, Tim. You got caught being hot. Uh, if we go to the alerts, uh, kind of a wild ride. Actually, let's go to the platform first. Looking at the S&P 500. Uh, I mean, we, we gapped down. Well, first we had that big down day last Friday, and then we gapped down on Monday uh, with the coronavirus scare. And then Tuesday we ripped higher, and then we dipped back down on Thursday. But, bef but by the end of the day, we had ripped higher, uh, sp specifically at the end of the day on the news of the uh, Amazon earnings announcement. And then today, things just fell apart. S&P's down over 62, Dow down 563, NASDAQ down over 200, and the Russell down 30. So big move. Now, going forward, my thoughts going forward, I mean, I, I just, I don't think that we just rebound and rip higher from here. I think, I think that we're going to see some significant more downside, maybe break under these, these lows here, kind of that 3075 level. Now, how quickly does that happen? I don't know. Do we? Does that actually even happen? Of course, nobody knows, but that's my thoughts. I mean, I think we probably, if we don't just, you know, sink lower pretty quick, I think, I think we look at kind of a little bit, kind of a consolidation or maybe a little bit of an up move, and then we continue to roll over. So, that's my thoughts. And, uh, and we'll see what happens. Um, let's jump into the alerts and I'll get a little bit more detail uh, and specific about some of the other positions. <clears throat> Starting with, we did an opening trade in SPX, put on a new iron duck with 14 days. We did that on Monday. So if we take a look at SPX, we've got two ducks in here. I uh, took one off earlier this week, booked a beak profit. Uh, here's this one that expires on the last day of trading is the 10th, expiration is on the 11th. Price is hanging out right here just inside the beak. And then the other one is in our duck head. And so if this one kind of stays steady for us, uh, we got a potential for a duck head. Obviously, if it continues lower, we're, we're going to need a bail on that one. But we'll see what happens. Uh, potential 610 max profit on that one. And, th and those expire on the 6th, so uh, in, into next week. Next trade, opening trade in XBI. So just dipping in, dipping our toe in, selling some premium and some of, some of these underlines that we haven't seen high implied, high implied volatility in for quite a while, uh, this one being XBI. So if we take a look at XBI, what you will see here is price is still pretty dead centered. You know, we got to move up and then back down, so we're pretty centered. Got a little bit of profit, just waiting for some more theta to decay in XBY, XBI. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in DE. So we, we went ahead and rolled this one out from Feb out to March. We were in a position where we were over 50% of max profit. And so we went ahead and just rolled this out to extend duration, keep that short delta in our portfolio, and look for potentially some more downside. So if we look at DE, you can see it's down about a percent and a half today. We've gained another 137-ish, 139 bucks since the roll. So just, again, holding this for some more uh, short delta exposure. And speaking of our short delta, we're after the move down today, we're only at about one to one on our short delta versus our theta. So, um, of course, we could put on the, the bunker trade as well, but we need a, you know, we'll need a huge move in there. And I'll talk about that here in a second. Next trade, opening trade uh, in Apple. So we put on an earnings iron duck in Apple. At that point, I had three days to expiration. And I'm going to go ahead and, and jump ahead to that closing trade just to, just to tie that one together. So right here, the very next day on the 29th, we closed that out and booked a beak profit on that, on that quick earnings trade. 
Uh, next trade was a, an opening trade in uh, Delta Airlines. Now, we don't do this very often. We don't just buy puts, but uh, just kind of I wanted to add a little bit more short Delta uh, with the whole coronavirus scare. I, you know, I figured uh, airlines would, would be one of the things that get gets hit the worst. What's interesting about this is if we look at Delta now, uh, D-A-L, you know, the market's down 2%, right, the S&P, but Delta Airlines is only down a little over 2%. So I would have thought uh, that, that Delta would have been down way much more than the market. But in this case, you know, we're still in a profitable situation up about 286 bucks. Uh, we're going to hold this, see if we can get some more downside action in it. The other thing is Delta came out today and announced that they were canceling all flights, uh, all Chinese flights. And so, again, I thought this would be down a little bit more, but uh, it is you know, still down a decent amount. But I, I figured it would have would dropped even more on that news and in comparison with the rest of the markets. But uh, anyway, that's where we're at in Delta. Next trade, opening trade in VIX. So this is where we, you know, we released our new strategy, the the buck, uh, VIX bunker or the portfolio bunker trade in this case in VIX. So we put this on with 139 days to expiration, and we will exit when we get down to about 60 days to expiration. So if you haven't seen the bunker class, uh, make sure you do so. Otherwise, this won't really make sense. But and we got a couple of questions because obviously with the S and P's down 60. The VIX was up about 20-ish percent. Let me see where it closed at. Uh, let's see, where's my VIX? Uh, VIX, yeah, up 21%. So if we look at that from where we put it on, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, in in kind of a short-term nature position, I mean, that that's that's a little bit of a spike. But that's that's not what we're talking about, and that's and we're not going to see a bunch of profits. In fact, let's go to like more like a a, a a one year chart. You can see that's nothing. I mean, we're still only at eighteen on the VIX. I mean, that's not a spike. When we talk about spike, where this where this bunker can really kick in, we're talking about major spikes. You know, up up here. You know, based on from where we put it on. So if we take a look at the trade. Uh, we did a five contract trade. As you can see, price is hanging out right here. So we really need to get out here, you know, 25, 26, 27 to, for it to really start kicking in. And remember, in the class we talked about, we compared it to iron condors. We compared it to using the VIX as a hedge against uh, short strangles and iron ducks. And remember, when you put those on, especially right now, I mean, you're going to have a big buffer to the downside. And so what the VIX bunker is here to do is to really kick in beyond that downside buffer that you have in those positions. And so, and I mentioned this, I think it might've been in the Q&A part of the class, but somebody asked about how does this, how does this affect the amount of short delta that we keep in our portfolio? And the answer is it, we still keep short delta positions, right? We're, we still need some of those short call verticals, long puts, uh, you know, those different downside uh, pieces to give us kind of that short-term benefit of a move like this, because this is really for that big move, that big spike in VIX, that big downdraft in the market. Um, you know, not just a little blip like we saw today. You're not going to see a bunch of profit in these. In that case, we we need a we need a pretty big move uh, for this to for this to kick in. So it doesn't replace our short delta. It just gives us more of that tail uh, tail protection in the case of a a major move. Uh, next trade, closing trade in Tesla. So we closed out our reverse iron duck in Tesla. Uh, they announced earnings and price was kind of sitting in our duck head. And so we didn't want to, in that position, we didn't want to hold that through earnings because we were, we were already into the duck head. So we just went ahead and closed that out. And then the next trade here is we put a new one on. So we basically just took one off, repositioned this thing. Uh, and, and had it started with the price in that beak area like we like to start. Now, what happened in Tesla? Well, uh, Tesla had a big move higher. Remember, this was a, a reverse iron duck, TSLA. And so, you know, uh, price moved well uh, outside the expected move at, at this jump here. Now, the overnight, let's look at the intraday because that really tells the story, right? Um, you know, so here's, here's overnight. And, and by the time the markets opened, it was all the way back down into the duck head. 
you know, so that's why you've got to let these things play out. I got a lot of emails, a lot of posts in the community. It's like, oh, we're dead. You know, this thing's blowing through our break even. We're going to lose all this money. To, you know, first of all, if, if you're that nervous, then that risk is too big for your account, right? So if, I mean, we only did one contract. And so, you know, it's not like you could get any smaller on this trade. But if if you are losing sleep and, and nervous about, you know, a trade going against you, you've got to think about that before you put the trade on. Okay, if the trade goes against us, we are going to stay mechanical. That's what the mechanics are in place for. Uh, but in this case, uh, it 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 dropped back back down into our range and it popped up a little bit. We ended up we ended up just getting out of this for about fifty percent of max profit. Booked about three hundred thirty bucks on the trade. Uh, but you know uh, you gotta you gotta stay mechanical and you've got to position size correctly. I can't stress that enough. If it's freaking you out, um, then that means it's just too big for you. Next trade, closing trade, uh, SPX. So we had an iron, one of our, we had a third iron duck in SPX. Those options just expired, booked a big profit of 125 on that trade. Then we had an opening trade in SMH. So implied volatility uh, spiked up in SMH. You can see at this point now it's at 85. So it's, it spiked even more than it was when we put this on. And it's moved down slightly, so price is hanging out right here, still well within our range, just waiting for some time to pass in that one. We did an opening trade in Amazon, so we did a an earnings iron duck in Amazon, and then we woke up this morning, or actually after the market closed last night, and uh, and Amazon exploded. So let's take a look again at the uh, overnight of Amazon, because that really tells some of the story. Uh, you can see on the daily chart, the big gap up, and then it kind of uh, faded back down during the day. But if we look at the intraday, you know, here's here's the big spike, and it, it got it all the way up to 2133. I mean, that's a pretty massive move, especially for a stock that size. They just blew away the earnings estimates, and then it uh, and then it continued to fade into the close today. So, uh, but we had that no risk to the upside, so that was good, and we booked a. Uh, we booked this profit. So by the time you're watching this, this will be gone. But basically, we booked 182 bucks. I uh, just cleaned out that uh, beak profit. So just letting that expire. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in Natty Gas. So so this one was a little bit different than we normally do because I I was I was I was considering rolling this one out, but we started looking at the strikes and kind of evaluating the strikes in Natty Gas. Let me click on Nat Gas and go to the trade tab to, to kind of show you what I mean. And let's go to the continuous contract so we get all the expirations. So we're going to roll this out to the, uh, I think it was 55 day, yeah, 55 day cycle. And we're the A, this, uh, the three put that we had is getting really deep in the money, you know. And so, and, and, these, and these deltas at this point just aren't, aren't really correct. And so basically the bottom line was the, we weren't really going to get a credit to roll this thing. And so we went ahead and just closed this one out. Uh, you can see, you know, even now, I mean, the market's closed, but I mean, look at the, these, these deltas are just a little bit goofy. You know, it goes from, from 30 to 40 to 50, 65, all the way up to 112. That That's just, you know that's just a little bit goofy, and and the and the liquidity in them was wasn't as good. So we just went ahead and closed that one out. Now we still have our other short strangle, which we will probably adjust next week. It's hanging out right here on the break even is where price is, and so we will probably uh, unless we get a big bounce higher, we will probably roll these calls down to about the 30 delta, and we will roll this out to the next expiration and continue to manage. Now, if implied volatility pops its head back up again in UNG, when we did this, it was about 49 on the IV percentile. Uh, now it's at 54. So somewhere around here, if it's somewhere around here, we will potentially re-enter and add back into this. So we'll have two sets of short strangles and just trying to work our way back to profits overall in that gas. So that's the plan there. In the existing one, we'll roll down the calls and roll out to the next cycle and then maybe even potentially add a new centered short strangle. So that's the plan in Natty. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in ZB. So we had that uh, adjusted strangles, adjusted to a 
into a 161 straddle, got down to 21 days to expiration, so we rolled out to the cycle with 56. Kept the strikes the same. I uh, did have a question on this in the community, so I just let me kind of readdress that real quick as well. The question was, why did we stay with that 161 strike? And here's the reason. Remember, if, if price moves out of our range and there's very little value left in the untested side, which if it moved up, that would be the put side, right? And so if, you, uh, if, if, if that's the case, we are going to roll the puts up. If it moves, if price were to move down, then we're going to roll the calls down and continue to collect that credit. In this case, you know, our, our strikes at 161, price when we rolled this was closer to 162. And so if you look at the, if you look at the strikes here, um, you know, at the point, now it's at the 35 delta, but at that point we wrote it was at the 38. So remember, we're typically going to roll up or down to about the 30 delta. Well, we don't want to, we don't want to roll backwards. You know, it would be, you know, in this case where if, if we were down here, like the three delta, we would roll up to the, about the 30 delta. Well, we're already at the 35. And so for that, for that reason, that's why we just, um, kept the 161. We don't want to. We don't want to roll down because we're, then we're going to collect less credit. It, we may not get a credit, a net credit on the overall roll. So that's that's the reason for positioning it around that 161 and just keeping it there. So hopefully that makes sense. Next trade was a closing trade in Tesla. So that was our uh, earnings reverse iron duck that we closed out this afternoon. Um, and this was one where. You know, sometimes we'll hold this closer to expiration. I actually had meetings this afternoon, so I wasn't able to uh, to monitor it as closely as I wanted. So we actually closed this one out a little bit early, and it actually was a benefit because if we look at Tesla, uh, go to the charts and check out the intraday move. You can see, you know, here's here's kind of where we took it off, somewhere around in in this area here. And it did, you know, rip higher the next the day, uh, rest of the day. So we actually would have given away that profit that we ended up booking. So no skill there. Not that I knew it was going to go up or anything like that. But uh, we got we got lucky and, and we were able to book a, a decent little profit on that one. Next trade was a closing trade in Amazon. And, and by the way, let me let me readdress Tesla a little bit. When you get down to a situation where you're in the last day of trading. Uh, and, and very small, the gamma is very high, right? This, a small market movement can either benefit you or take away your profits. I want, I want you trade hackers to really take ownership and, and use your own discretion on where to exit those. Now, I posted in the community this morning and said, you know, we'll be closing today. Please use your own discretion. Then right before I closed it out, I, I posted again in the community saying, hey, you know, here's a situation. I'm going to go ahead and book this pretty quick because I can't watch it uh, for the last couple hours of the, of the market. And so, and I, I said again, please use your discretion on when you want to close. And I and you've got to do that because there's no magic. I don't know what the market's going to do. Nobody knows what the market's going to do. And so, you know, anytime you anytime we get to a point where we have, uh, you know, we're in a very kind of the last day of trading. And, and a small market movement can either make or break that trade, you've got to use your discretion. Don't, don't wait for the alert. That's not what this is about. This is about making decisions. You know, 90% of what we do is, is very mechanical, but there's that 10% that is subjective, that you've got to take an assumption, that you've got to take ownership on. And that, that's one of those situations. So hopefully everybody did well in that one. And then lastly, closing trade in Amazon, I mentioned we just we just let those options expire and booked Beak Profit there. So let's go to the other positions and see what we've got going on, uh, starting with oil. Now the markets are closed here, but this is well within range. We're down a little bit, not as much as it's showing here. It's showing we're down about 800 bucks. That's not correct. These options are closed. But uh, still well within range, but implied volatility is spiking. So that kind of pushed our P&L line down. And uh, so just waiting for some time to pass in oil. We've got this long put vertical in ES that we've been holding for short delta. Price is hanging out right inside the range after that big down move today. So just holding this for some more short delta exposure. In gold, we've still got these two different pieces here. We've got the short call vertical. Again, markets are closed. So this is going to look a little bit goofy on the analyze tab. But um, 
Just need a little bit of downside in gold to get back into range. We've got a lot of time here, still 25 days to expiration on that. And you know we'll hold this all the way potentially to expiration week uh, because it's defined risk. We can't get assigned on futures, so we're just gonna we're just gonna hold on to that. And then we've got another piece which is a full iron condor, and let me click on that, and that's right here. So yeah, uh, just we could use a slight down move, but pretty pretty well in range here. And once we get to about you know 30 40 percent of max profit, we'll look to to book book profits in here again. But the market's closed. We're, we don't have that much profit in this trade yet. It's a little bit lower than that, but we will uh, look to potentially book profits next week if uh, if we get the IV contraction that would help that. I mentioned Natty Gas. Uh, I mentioned ZB. Wheat. So we've got this iron condor in wheat. Price is hanging out right here. Uh, just waiting, playing the waiting game in wheat. Uh, Apple finally got a little down move. How about them apples? Down a, a little over 4%. Still not back into range uh, on this one because it was so far out. But uh, if we take a look at a chart of Apple, uh, biggest significant down move that we've seen in quite some time. Uh, so that's, uh, that, that's, good for the, that's good for the trade there. Uh, Amazon I mentioned, Delta Airlines I mentioned, uh, John Deere I mentioned, DIA. We've got these, still got these two sets of short call verticals in DIA, uh, one of which is in Fed. You can see prices hanging out right here inside the range. And then the other is right here out in March. And we've got some, you know, some profit since that roll. Uh, just holding that again for some more short Delta. FXI, we put on this short strangle. Uh, and, and price has moved lower since then. This is the Chinese large cap price is hanging out right here. Uh, I looked at potentially adding another uh, centered strangle around this thing, uh, but figured I'd wait till Monday. You know, if we get some additional follow through, I don't want to add too early. Um, so we, we might potentially add to this one in FXI. If we look at the chart, obviously implied volatility super high in there and so we'll see what happens in fxi obviously if it bounces higher we'll just continue to keep this trade that we have on if it continues lower we may look to add to it iwm uh so this is one i was looking at towards the end of the day of potentially uh rolling because we are over 50 percent of max profit uh but again i just figured i'd give it a little bit more time give it over the weekend if we get a little bit of follow through then we'll do it on monday or even if we bounce higher a little bit we might potentially just roll this out uh, this one is in Feb, so we just roll this out to March, squeeze up our strikes a little bit, collect that credit, and continue to keep that short delta in our portfolio. Netflix, we've got this reverse duck on, and so price is hanging out right here just inside the duck head. Uh, hopefully prices can stay somewhat stable and uh, just kind of in this range and, and look to book a, a duck head later this uh, later next week in Netflix. QQQ, we've got similar to DIA, we've got these two sets of short call verticals. Price is hanging out right here in our Feb one, and then the one in March, uh, price is even deeper. So we've got a little bit of profit on that one. I mentioned SMH, uh, SPX I mentioned, SPY, we've got this short call vertical here. Price is just inside range there, so just holding that for some more short delta. I mentioned the VIX. I mentioned XBI, and then lastly, XLK, this long put vertical, again, a short delta play, uh, price outside the range still, just waiting you know, for some potentially some more downside to benefit that. So that is all the alerts. Those are all the positions. Everybody have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week.